Good evening. The word passion is one we often associate with love, but actually it means suffer. Thinking of passion in connection with love, however, is not inaccurate, for it is true that we are willing to suffer for that which we love. It is the longest single story in the New Testament. It is believed to be the oldest story written down by the Gospel writers. And most importantly, it tells of the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, which he endured out of a deep love for all humanity. The Passion story begins this week, the week before Easter, a week we call Holy Week. That week, Holy Week, began with Jesus riding triumphantly into Jerusalem on the day we call Palm Sunday. During the next three days, a conspiracy was undertaken to arrest and crucify him, and that played out over the following two days. That is the story we tell tonight. We tell the story of Jesus' Last Supper, his final prayer, his arrest, his crucifixion, his death and burial. And we tell the story tonight from memory because long before anything was ever written down in the Bible, the words and actions of Jesus were passed on orally, one storyteller to another storyteller, one voice to another voice, one person to another person. As these stories were told, they were undoubtedly shared with great enthusiasm and excitement, as well as deep heartache and anguish. In telling this story in that manner tonight, we stand in the tradition of our spiritual ancestors. And in telling this story from memory, we allow the two-dimensional letters on the pages of Scripture to become the three-dimensional, living, breathing, life-giving words they were meant to be. Finally, we tell this story as a team because any one of us can tell this story and because we all have a role to play if the Word of God is going to be spread throughout the world. We will be taking communion during the service, but in order not to disrupt the narrative flow of the story we're telling, we ask you to get your communion supplies ready now or soon in the service here. And when you see the storytellers come to the front and face you and take communion themselves, that will be your silent cue to partake of your own elements. Two other notes about the service. We ask you to put your cell phones on silence or airplane mode, whatever you have to do to keep it from making noise. And then at the end of the service tonight, we will sit in darkness for just a couple of seconds and then when the house lights come back up slowly, the storytellers will exit down the center aisle and we ask you not to move until they leave the center aisle and then you can quietly uh, get up and make your way out. And we ask that you leave in silence out of respect for the story that we're telling, but come back on Easter because the story will continue first thing at the beginning of worship. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Holy God, you have commanded us to love one another as you have loved us. We confess that we do not love so generously. Gathered on this holy Thursday, we confess that we are capable of denying and betraying you and one another, no less than the first disciples. Forgive us, merciful God, and cleanse us from all our sin. Then guide our feet to walk with you always. You know us fully, and you offer love and forgiveness unconditionally. Through your word and spirit, be with us now, and instill in us the understanding 
that with gratitude for the grace offered and as witness to our faith in Christ, we are empowered to live as true and righteous disciples. Through Christ we pray. Amen. When they were approaching Jerusalem, at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and he will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus. They threw their cloaks on it, and Jesus sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival or there may be a riot among the people.
While he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon, the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why is the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard this, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray him. day when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples went to Jesus and they said, where do you want us to go so we may make preparations for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of them saying, go into the city and you will see a man carrying a jar of water. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So they set off for the city and they found everything just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve, and and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They became distressed and were talking amongst themselves and saying, Surely, 
not I. He said to them, it is one of the twelve, one of them that is dipping the bread in the bowl beside me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one that the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better had he not been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank of it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, 
they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, all of you will become deserters. As it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. But after I'm raised up, I am going ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said, Lord, even if all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this day, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Peter said vehemently, even if I must die with you, Lord, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. He said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John. He began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I'm deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going on a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and, and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, with you all things are possible. Let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and, and found them asleep, and he said to Peter, Simon? Are you sleeping and taking your rest? Could you not stay awake with me one hour? Keep awake and, and, and pray that you do not come into the time of trial. For indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed, saying the same thing. Once more, he came and found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say. He came a third time and said, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. Look, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now, the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. And Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? 
day after day I was with you in the temple, teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter followed at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest, where he sat with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony, but their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, we heard him say he would destroy this temple made with hands, and in three days build another one not made with hands. But even on this point, they did not agree. Then the chief priest stood up and said to them, What is your answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus didn't answer and was silent. Again, the chief priest said, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. The chief priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we need any more witnesses? You heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. They began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was in the courtyard below, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But Peter denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he stepped into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. Again, the servant girl said to the bystanders, you are one of them. But again, Peter denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them. 
for you're a Galilean. Peter began to curse and swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will have denied me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a council, held, held a consultation with the elders, the scribes, and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, you say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? They have made, brought many charges against you. But Jesus made no reply, so Pilate was amazed. Now, during the festival, Pilate used to release for them a prisoner, anyone for whom they asked. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. The crowd came together and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. And Pilate said, Do you wish me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized it was out of jealousy that they handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to ask for Barabbas instead. And Pilate said, then what do you want me to do with the one that you call the king of the Jews? And they shouted back, crucify him. And Pilate said, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat on him, and knelt in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloth 
and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought him to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Then they divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide who would take what. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they also crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by the cross derided him shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross, save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests along with the scribes were also mocking him in this way. <laughs> he saved others. He cannot even save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross and, and we will believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness fell over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus gave a loud cry saying, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when the bystanders heard it, they said, He is calling for Elijah. And some of them went and soaked a sponge in sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let's see if Elijah will come and take him down. And then, with a loud cry, he breathed his last. And the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now the centurion, who had stood facing him, when he saw the way in which he died, in which he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son.
There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph, and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was evening, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who himself was expectantly waiting the coming kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate wondered whether Jesus were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he inquired whether Jesus had been dead for some time. And when Pilate learned that Jesus was indeed dead, he granted the body to Joseph. And Joseph brought a linen cloth. In taking the body, he wrapped it in the linen cloth. He laid it in a tomb that had been hewn from the rock. And he rolled a stone in front of the door of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of Joseph, they saw where the body was laid.
that causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble.